Uh, thank you so much for, um, for, for staying with us this afternoon. Uh, we are going into our second portion of the programming today. Um, I'm going to start by introducing um, one of the, the key person for organizing this exhibition. Um, her name is Ms. Dominic Dennis. She's the curator of uh, the porch is um, the porch is the tree, the is, the is, the tree is the watering hole. Sorry, the, ti <laughs> the title know. just left me. Yeah. Um, so, so Dominic is a train is a trained as an architect with more than two decades of combined experience in architecture, urban planning, and public art curating. She has worked on several firms mm -hmm. in the in the New York metropolitan area and South Florida. For the past, past six years, her experience working for the Broward Cultural Division with artists, architects, and other design professionals has introduced her to the world of cross-disciplinary collaboration. And then we also have, as a part of this panel, Ms. Adrienne Chadwick. Uh, Adrienne is a visual artist with uti who utilizes accumulation, repetition, and translucence to express ideas related to power and resistance in society and nature. She has worked as a museum administrator since 1994, earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the New World School of the Arts, and a Master of Public Administration from Nova Southeastern University. Her work has been exhibited at Aqua Art Fair in Miami, a Diaspora Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator in Miami, and Girls Club Collection in Fort Lauderdale. So to, to kick off this segment, I will ask you, Dominic, um, uh, an important question as you are the curator of the exhibition. Um, what was the impetus for your conceptualization of this exhibition and how did you choose a group of artists that are a part of it? Um, I started working on this exhibition in the summer of 2019. At the time I was working on a couple of projects in the Sistrak area. And um, one particular project was uh, dealing with concept of uh, the link between West African culture and the, the African diaspora. Mm -hmm. And there were so many research and um, community engagement done during this project that I got to really know uh, the community. Mm -hmm. And there were talks about having an exhibition about this particular project, but having seen the people of Sistra. And I have to mention that during my exploration of the neighborhood for this project, I got to realize there are so many similarities between Sistra and Haiti, for mm. example. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, uh, well, you must know that I was born and raised in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And those similarities, um, especially in the way people gather uh, all over, the neighborhood mm -hmm. reminded me so much of Haiti that I wanted to explore this. Mm -hmm. And also, instead of having an exhibition about one sculpture, I wanted to showcase the community mm -hmm. because I thought that would have been something that was more powerful, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, so uh, when we, the first thing to do was to come up with a concept, of mm -hmm. course and uh, selling the idea to the director was one of our major milestones <laughs> because we really needed Phil Dunlap to actually approve a budget for the project. Mm -hmm. And thank God he, he liked the idea and mm -hmm. said yes. Mm -hmm. So we should really thank him because that was the first major awesome. milestone yep. to get this done. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Phil. <laughs> and, um, and then it was about time to put the team together. I have to say that working on that project, dealing not the exhibition, but working on those projects in the Sister area was probably the first time I felt like my own personal interests mm -hmm. merge with, with what I'm doing at work. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to tap into mm -hmm. both sides of myself, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the architectural designer slash researcher would like to explore black communities and communities that are at the margin of society in a way mm -hmm. and also uh dominate the public art and design project manager mm -hmm. so those two signs of me came together and i tap into two groups of artists mm -hmm. the local artists who actually i uh, learned to appreciate because um they work 
um, previous project with the cultural division and other people that I actually have seen the work from a distance sometimes. I, some of them I didn't know personally, uh, but I followed their career mm -hmm. and I knew they could come together and do some wonderful work together. Mm -hmm. I have to say the local artists as you met them were David, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Darius and um, David Darius, George. Uh, George Gatson, mm -hmm. and later on, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Adrian has not worked with us, but I was familiar with her work, yes. mm -hmm. especially uh, the small houses that she's been, the series that she's been doing. Mm -hmm. And when I approached her, deep down inside, I, I wanted her to say, yes, I think the small houses. So I waited until <laughs> she answers, and and thank God she, she wanted so those series dealing with the uh, redlining to be part of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And um, and I tap into, as I mentioned, <clears throat> the other people that I was not too familiar with, mm -hmm. that I didn't know personally, but uh, like Jermaine, for example, mm -hmm. I had met, somewhat met Jermaine like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, at the time he was on a panel at Design Miami. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, um, I learned about the work that he's been doing for Paloca. Mm -hmm. So I knew that the concept I had for the exhibition, concept that is centered around the gathering space and the back alley, mm -hmm. I knew that he was somebody based on his previous work that could actually uh, create something that would be central to the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And thank God when I approached him, he said yes. And the funny thing was, after our conversation about the project, when we met, we saw this space, and he said, this is going to be a great exhibition. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I should be the one convincing him, mm -hmm. but he's already all I'm excited about you. it. Yeah. And uh, so that was really a good connection. Mm -hmm. And um, and when we talk about um, Adler, I've seen Adler's work at the PAM Museum in Miami. Mm -hmm. And I, I liked it because I always say that Adler think it could have been a good um, urban planner, mm -hmm. the way he thinks, the way he analyzes cities. And I, and I knew we needed something like that for this exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to bring different artists with different backgrounds because I felt like the exhibition needed to exp be experienced emotionally mm -hmm. and also spatially. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one person, two people that I were not here that I also want to uh, mention mm -hmm. are Marlene Bruno. I knew her, she's part of my personal network. Mm -hmm. I knew her because we went to grad school together. She's an urban planner and I knew she could actually create an interesting map for us. Mm -hmm. Something that is not too that it doesn't look like a GIS map, mm -hmm. even though she's an urban planner. Mm -hmm. And also um, Lake. Mm -hmm. Lake was at the time working on a project um, for, for Port Everglades. Mm -hmm. And during the selection process, I went to his website and I saw his sculptures and I was like, wow. One of them in particular, mm -hmm. I mean, those two sculptures that are here, mm -hmm. I really like them. And Thank God, uh, lucky me, yes. when I asked him, he had two of them, two left. Yes. So he was nice enough to to bring, uh, to send us those two sculptures. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think putting this team together was so important mm -hmm. because people had to work in a collaborative manner. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that nobody had a big ego. They mm -hmm. could all work together. Mm -hmm. And this was really a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, I have to I have to mention that this was happening last year, 2020, yeah. during COVID. Yeah. And it was, you start, we do the kickoff meeting and then we had to wait for another three months until we can go out there. Yeah. Because a lot of, of the work was to first explore the neighborhood before mm -hmm. you can actually produce the art. Yeah. So it was really a wonderful experience. And we really got to meet um, the people of Sistrunk and mm -hmm. you know, the, some of them opened their homes. Mm -hmm. And you can look at uh, David's picture and yeah. you see how welcoming. I know he's going to talk about it, so yeah. I don't want to talk too much about yeah. that. But that was a really wonderful experience mm -hmm. to actually get to meet mm -hmm. the people of Sistrunk. Yeah.
No, I, and I think um, the collaborative nature of the exhibition is sort of an extension of what architectural practice is. And you're an architect. Yes. We architects have to work together. To, you have to work together to create. These. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. In a way, it's like managing the part, the project, project as you yeah. will manage the construction of a building or right. something like that. Absolutely. Just all the everybody has something very special that brings to the team, mm -hmm. and and it's all telling one story. Mm -hmm. It's it's you know at the beginning you actually have a concept, you have a narrative, and I had a little some visual i think i had a powerpoint that i sent to everybody about what i was thinking in terms of uh, the flow of the exhibition mm -hmm. and when when germain introduced the shotgun home that shotgun home mm -hmm. that really gave the exhibition a more spatial feel mm -hmm. like you know when you enter the space through the alleyway and you enter the shotgun home mm -hmm. then you it's a process and you feel like you're really immersed into the experience mm -hmm. and and that's why all the pieces are talking to each other mm -hmm. in many ways and i think having the right team mm -hmm. was the best uh recipe mm -hmm. for success that's why everything seems to be connected so, yes, to each other absolutely you know big uh, big uh, thank you to all the artists yes. who actually yeah. work through some of the most difficult time and nobody gave up nobody said oh mm -hmm. this is too much mm -hmm. and they were all in it 100 mm -hmm. and this is a privilege yeah clearly yeah. and i mean my understanding is that you know many of the artists who are participating um in this exhibition have also um done great work outside of this exhibition exactly during exactly. during the pandemic as well yeah um exactly. so i think people yeah found the motivation to keep on going and can continue or maybe it was an opportunity for a lot of artists to do some of them some of them were busy if some of them were not mm -hmm. and they thought that was a great opportunity to actually do something interesting different mm -hmm. and to explore um a different a different neighborhood you mm -hmm. know something different mm -hmm. you know and i think because there was a narrative that went through the entire exhibition mm -hmm. um it was interesting to to most of the artists mm -hmm. obviously i uh, you know um not everybody that i talked to when i was putting the team together was approved for the project mm -hmm. because i wanted to make sure that the team was right, right. and this was the right this team. The right team. Yeah, this, the bar is really high when it comes to me doing something else with other people. Yeah. Because I don't think we had any problems throughout the process, and that was that was amazing. That's a blessing. Yeah, that's a blessing. <laughs> I've heard really. horror stories, but <laughs> this was really good collaboration. Yeah. And then speaking of um, having a good team, um, mm -hmm. you have Adrian, Adrian. Uh, to your right. Um, Adrian, I wanted to ask you about your piece, Settlement. Um, uh, it addresses hard realities, um, similar to a question that was asked in the previous se segment um, about um, that many diasporic communities, including cisgender, face like housing inequality, economic and climate gentrification, um, policy-driven dis disenfranch disenfranchisement, redlining, et cetera. Um, tell me how your piece um, addresses um, some of those hard, those hard realities, and um, and and how you wanted people to receive and commute um, the message in your work. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, resettlement is a piece that's made out of hundreds of handmade clay houses, black earthenware clay that has been high fired in a kiln, mm -hmm. and it also includes um, thread, red thread of varying weights um, that are twisted around around the houses. The houses are all um, in straight lines, rows. And um, this piece was a new piece for me because I've created the houses before the installations with houses, but I've never included another material. So this time including this red thread mm -hmm. um, was a symbolic, a way to symbolically really push forward the idea of redlining. And, um, you know, resettlement is a kind of displacement that happened. And I had been doing research on redlining in Miami and in Fort Lauderdale. I found a lot of maps in Miami. Mm -hmm. And um, resettlement happened because 
um, the powers that be chose a specific neighborhood to be a specific neighborhood. So maybe it was a neighborhood for of working class people originally, and the the politicians or um, the powers that be decided that that's a neighborhood that they didn't want to be that. They shuffle around using policies and using maps and using um, kind of just planning and and nudging buyers and developers to to develop in different places. Mm -hmm. And so um, that kind of reminded me of of maybe what has happened to Sistra mm -hmm. and to many neighborhoods right. um, across the nation and uh, across this region, nation, and maybe even globally. Yeah. 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 There is a, um, a book uh, that um, I read a couple years ago um, called The Color of Law. Mm -hmm. um, and it was basically um, a an explanation of redlining and, and how it has basically, and how policy was the driver of a lot of the, the displacement and, um, and um, you know, just systemic um, disenfranchisement of mm -hmm. minorities in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and each chapter basically either highlighted very specific communities and they were always black communities, things like highways being built through communities. Mm -hmm. Zoning. Zoning. And, and mm -hmm. um, loans, mm -hmm. you know, the way the way loans are given, predatory loan, mm -hmm. loan um, activities. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which is what happened in 2008. 2008 was like this bubble because people were literally giving loans to people who may not have been able to manage mm -hmm. large loans like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, I think that, you know, your piece um, it's an extension of work that you were doing previously as mm -hmm. well. But what I love about the quality of your pieces is that you have homes, like you mentioned earlier when you were speaking, homes that were handcrafted, as you as you call them. Mm -hmm. But then as you continued practicing, the, work, the, 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 the quality of the pieces became more manufactured. Mm -hmm. Um, and so can you speak to that, that quality and, and how that may in some ways bolster the narrative of your piece? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. The, when I began making this project, this, these houses, mm -hmm. not originally, but for this show, mm -hmm. I, I went through the process of, you know, thinking about making a mold for the house. So mm -hmm. I went to a specialist, to a ceramicist, and you know, learned how to make a mold mm -hmm. because I was gonna make these houses out of molds. Mm -hmm. And then the more that I thought about it, I, I wanted that handmade quality. And I wanted to talk about labor and building because that's, you know, um, working working class people or people that are, you know, in the Sistrunk neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And and each house is different. And I wanted to celebrate the differences because oftentimes in new developments <clears throat> houses are cookie cutter style houses that are kind of the same design repeated over and over again mm -hmm. and so and you know growing up in south florida both in miami and, and broward county it was always preferred to live in one of these fancy new mm -hmm. neighborhoods and and around the time of hurricane andrew my parents bought an old you know 1960s home, mm -hmm. Florida home, concrete block home. Mm -hmm. And our friends' families bought, bought homes along Flamingo, uh, uh, like 27th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And after Hurricane Andrew, all these fancy, beautiful homes weren't to hurricane code. Yeah. And they, you know, they, 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 they're gone, mm -hmm. they were gone. Yeah. And so I just, and also being from Central America and the Caribbean, I just, I always have had this um, love of the uniqueness of homes and having homes painted different colors mm -hmm. and gardens that have grown over the years and, you know, just the character mm -hmm. that are found in old homes. And so I wanted to kind of symbolize that by having each house being handmade and therefore they're all slightly different. Mm -hmm. No, it's beautiful. Um, and how do you, how do cause we were also talking about, um, um, your your interest in breaking free from the narrative um this specific narrative of you so how do you how do you envision your your practice um evolving from from this exhibition 
Well, this opportunity was kind of a, a turning point, I suppose, for this particular series, because mm -hmm. I was telling you before we went on air that previously I had made these houses quite a, a while ago, mm -hmm. and I kept on receiving requests to show the houses again. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm a full-time arts administrator and a full-time artist mm -hmm. and, um, and don't necessarily have a whole lot of time in the studio all the time. And so Dominique asked me to, sh to show the houses or she was, you know, she yeah. actually, she says that she didn't <laughs> yeah. say specifically, but I don't know. I don't know. Today. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember, but it just, maybe she didn't. Maybe a hint. Maybe she didn't, but this show is definitely like of yeah. all my work, yeah. that work is, is connected to this show. Mm. And so I made, I put my foot down to myself mm -hmm. and I told myself, I'm never going to show the previous series again. Uh -huh. And every time that somebody wants me to show, to, to do something with my houses, I'm going to make a whole new piece. Mm -hmm. So even since, since this show, other people have asked me to, to show these houses and I've, since then made new houses. I've added white porcelain to, mm -hmm. to signify um, the, the contrast between cultures or races mm -hmm. and gentrification. Mm -hmm. So it was a good, Dominic, Dominic did a great job of inspiring me yeah. to, you know, I like move, move my practice, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. But I also like the fact that when you first presented them, they didn't have the right line. They didn't. And I told you, you have time. You could add the right line. I told you about lines. this idea. And then I was yeah, and, and she was like, and then you were like, no, do it now for this show. For this show. <laughs> yeah. If you have, if you're going to do something new, I wanted it to be for this show. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be special. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's great. Yeah. And actually something just came to mind now that I'm, cause I'm looking at the pieces from like they're right behind you. Um, and was it, I'm noticing that the actual red lines that are made of the thread, they're falling off the side of mm -hmm. the pedestal. Mm -hmm. um, was that, was, was it a specific choice for you to allow it to just drape over? Mm -hmm. Because you could have stopped, you mm -hmm. could have stopped it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, you know, I knew, I knew I was going to use the thread. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan it out in advance. Typically, when I'm going to do an installation, I plan it out and I, I set it all out. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do that this time. Mm -hmm. I came intuitively mm -hmm. to the to the space. Mm -hmm. I don't think I even knew that there were going to be two pedestals. Okay. And so there are two pedestals, and I just kind of went with the flow and placed all the houses. Mm -hmm. It changed a lot. It was kind of just, you know, go with the flow. And then it was just an intuitive um, decision to put the thread down and. As I was placing it and playing with it, um, I realized that, oh, this thread can be a connector between two pedestals mm -hmm. and connect these two pedestals. And then that's how I started to um, decide to have it hang off the edge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I told you um, off the air, the red lines are not specific red lines of Sistrunk. They're symbolic mm -hmm. um, to represent the idea of redlining. It's like an abstract kind of an abstract narrative yes. there. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so what I want to do now um, that we've had an opportunity to speak with both of you about your contributions to this exhibition, I'd like to open it up to our, our audience to ask questions of Dominic and Adrian. Um, and um, if our team here has any questions for me, I can go ahead. Um, if you just in, give us one second to gather the questions for you all. In the meantime, I would like to thank a couple of people. Sure. I don't know if, if you mind. Yes. Um, I, for anybody who would like to do an exhibition like this, especially when you are uh, introducing yourself, you're not from a community and you're going to do research about the community, it is always good to have a community liaison to actually be the person to introduce you mm -hmm. because it's all it's good practice yeah. and for that reason Al, i would like to thank grace cool she's our community engagement director for from mm -hmm. the cultural division i want to thank her because she's she was our community liaison she's been working in sistrong for years and she was 
especially at the beginning, she introduced us to all the trailblazers, mm -hmm. the people who actually can say, okay, it's okay for you to be walking around here and ask questions and take pictures. You know, you, you kind of want somebody to do that for you. And uh, a special thank you also to Dennis Harrison. Mm -hmm. She has, had been working in the community for years. Mm -hmm. And the historical wall that you see in the back yes. with all those historical pictures, uh, it's one of the favorite from the people in Sistrong. Mm -hmm. They always come to it. We could not have that wall without her because mm -hmm. she went and knocked on doors yeah. to get us those pictures. Yeah. So special thank you to um, Dennis Harrison. And last but not least, a special thank you to Luke Jenkins. Mm -hmm who was our installer. He was not only our installer, he's also a local artist. So he's a, it w he was our problem solving guy, mm -hmm. you know, during the installation. It, and I learned a lesson from that, always bring the installer during the design process mm -hmm. because the installer can tell mm -hmm. the artist, oh, maybe that's not a good idea. Why don't you do this or that to install the piece? Don't wait until the end to actually come, you know, introduce the installer to yeah. the work that's being installed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know I'm looking at Leslie Fordham, who's here. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you for just, you know, working on this project. I have a full load of work sure. also. Sure. So she kind of look the other way when I was disappearing from the office. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. But this was a very special project and I felt like, you know, it will help us make good connections with the community mm -hmm. for the future, for the other public art project we'll have in the future. Absolutely. All right. Amazing. Thank you. Well, I have the questions for you all now. Um, so I'm going to start with a oh. question to you, Dominic. Um, did you know what artist mediums you wanted in this exhibition? Did you know beforehand? Um, I know the work from the Dillard High School students will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I know about the photography. I wanted David to explore the neighborhood and have a series of pictures. Mm -hmm. I knew that the pictures will be about uh, the gathering place where, where people gather in the neighborhood. Um, and um, so I know about that. I knew about, I didn't know what Adler was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, all the, the artists that are in along the gathering space, I think pretty much I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest surprise was the chairs mm -hmm. yeah. because um, we designed some, we, we were thinking about the gathering space and I gave Germain total freedom to come up with a concept mm -hmm. and we had the first concept but because of covid we could not do it and then he introduced the chair that was a very nice surprise yeah. but those chairs are everybody wants one yeah. so one that too. was a good <laughs> that was a good thing those yeah. are famous chairs yes they are. so so some of it i knew um i know different elements that i wanted Mm -hmm. And I know what medium they will be in. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, the biggest surprise are, are the chairs. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and Adrian, um, are there any particular examples of redlining that inspired your piece of settlement? Yeah. Um, I looked at at maps. Mm -hmm. You know, I if um, anybody follows me on Instagram, I had been posting um, some of these maps, mm -hmm. mostly, I mostly found digitized versions of Miami maps, but all around the nation, mm -hmm. every city, every big city in the nation, yeah. if you Google search, you know, red line maps from the 1950s, what I realized as I did my research is that if you can't, you have to say Negro communities, not black communities oh, wow. because of the time period and the, the language that was used at the time period. So that kind of, you know, changed the way that I was searching. Mm -hmm. um, and so from the 1920s, 1930s, there are maps that have been have been digitized. And since then, my sister uh, who lives in Sistrunk with her two boys um, and works at the his, his, 
history Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. and the Fort Lauderdale archives, she has since found for me after the show, yeah. um, redlining maps of Fort Lauderdale, but they just haven't been digitized, digitized yet. So we have kind of more tricks up our sleeve to maybe write a white paper um, and maybe do some more work together going forward. That's amazing. Oh, wow. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, output mm -hmm. post research. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned that you were posting the um, the research that you were doing on your Instagram. So can you tell us what your Instagram handle is? So Adrian Chadwick. So it's just Adrian Chadwick. <laughs> so at Adrian Chadwick. Mm -hmm. um, and then one last question for Dominique. Um, is there a possibility that this could be a permanent installation? Permanent. I, that's something I didn't think about. You, you mean being part of a permanent collection somewhere? Um, it's, I mean, they use the word installation. So installation. Yeah. <laughs> that's something we'll, we'll have to think about. Yeah. Yep. If anybody has a location, put yeah. it into the chat put, box. Yeah. Put it in the chat box. <laughs> if you are from an institution and you are uh, watching and you're interested in having the exhibition, just contact the cultural division and uh, we can talk but that will be interesting originally we wanted the exhibition to travel but a lot of people things are booked for years at a time yeah. yes mm -hmm. so um it's very difficult mm -hmm. you know but we open especially the exhibition will be on view until um, may the 29th mm -hmm. so that's um we have a few weeks to talk about it and come up with some ideas. Because when I come here and I look at it, I feel a little bit sad that it's going to go away. But unless we find another space for it, the right space for it, then, then that will be it. So you heard it from, from Dominic, if you have any, and, and Adrian, if you have any um, hope, hopeful spaces, any venues that would be great for, for, this, um, for this exhibition, contact the division, the Broward Division of Cultural Affairs. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if there is no more questions, um, we are going to wrap up the second segment of tonight's programming. We are going to have our final two panelists in just about two minutes. Um, and they're joining us virtually from Jamaica and Chicago. And that's Jermaine Barnes and David Muir. <laughs> 